Hey, I'm Dan from Tesseract, and you're listening to Collision Radio. Hello. Hi, Dan. It's Kat. Hi, Kat. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Of course, we're here to discuss the new Tesseract album, Sonda. And, well, I've had a listen to it, and it's a pretty amazing journey. And you've got the new single, King, out, and the film clip's so haunting. Is that kind of like a theme of what the album is, that haunting reality or something? I don't know. It was... Yeah, so the concept of the album bases itself around individuality and how we perceive ourselves and how we perceive ourselves against others as well. So the actual meaning of the word Sonder, which is the title of the album, is a description of when you're surrounded by lots of other people uh, and then you suddenly realise that those other people are living equally as vivid and complex lives as your own. So that can go one of two ways. It can either make you feel quite insignificant or, or quite empowered. But either way, it kind of gives you a different perspective and maybe maybe stops you, you know, from being or feeling so selfish because we are quite selfish beings, you know, living within this one frame of mind, one consciousness and one body. I know it's very deep, but this is what the album means. It's about giving people perspective trying to pull them out of that kind of very apathetic way of living that we can have. Yeah. Well, so it's quite a deep meaning. I'll be very, very honest, it's very deep, and a lot of the songs touch upon or relate to Sonder in some way. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot to talk about, and it, it is a little bit of a wormhole, I'll be very honest. <laughs> but that's <Yeah>. the idea. <laughs> now, we, re- we really want to get people talking. Well, definitely the film clip for King can get people talking. As I said, it's pretty um, haunting and pretty, like you said, it's real. It's reality and it's definitely not shy at all. Yeah, it's not shy. No. That's for sure. Yeah, the, 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 the video directors did an absolutely amazing job in kind of visualising the song. We didn't really give them any direction, to be honest, other than I gave them a brief description of what the song meant. Yeah. And they, yeah. they came back with this awesome storyboard and ended up being this really beautiful, but yeah, like I say, very haunting cinema experience so it is very much like a, a short film in a way rather than a typical music video yeah can i ask then like were you writing like this before you joined tesseract back in 2009 or is this something that you sort of come about from being in tesseract um i just think it's a it's a sign of growth really i've when i started in tesseract i was in my mid-20s i'm now in my mid-30s uh, i've got a family got two children i'm just being observational really <laughs> viewing the world from a different perspective myself and i think being a creator and living quite a quite a free life i'm in a very very happy and very comfortable place even though it's hard it's hard at times i'm not that well off comfortably i'm not that secure in the financial world but you know i get i get to travel and see some incredible things and meet incredible people and that really does also give you um, a lot of life experience and a, and a great deal of perspective in itself. You know, viewing, viewing how other cultures work, meeting people from different corners of the world, different cult- cultures and belief systems, and it makes you a very rounded person. And I guess it kind of gives us more more license to kind of think in this way. <laughs> so that's the beauty of being you know, a, a creator is you have more time to pull yourself out of that kind of onerous life, those, those kind of like daily constraints that we, that, that, that we all feel. Mm. Yeah, I have more time on my hands, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but then, as you said, you're a father now too. So are you kind of trying to look at the world more so because you're – wondering what your children are going to inherit yeah and i'm also seeing it through their eyes as well and kind of relating to my own experiences as a child and just seeing how drastically different the world actually is from when i was a kid before we even had a telephone i was having this conversation the other day about how when you're a kid and you've got relationships it was very very much you know you had to spend a lot of time with people and kind of select the right people you wanted to be friends with and now people are forming those relationships online Mm. in a very very different way very separate from that personal one-to-one interaction there's certainly no body language involved in talking to somebody online so i think i'm kind of worried in one way that my children may slip into that way of of growth Mm. and um i don't i don't really want them to i want to make the right decisions in life and i guess a lot of what i write about is really a the legacy, in a way, is really something for them to kind of explore and, and look back on. And yeah, it's, um, I actively try and parent in that way. 
but also the music is everlasting, isn't it? When you when you write an album, it's gonna it's mm. gonna last as long as people have access to it or want to listen to it. Yeah, you got to write about meaningful things, in my opinion. I mean, we're not but we're a uh, light band. We're quite heavy in many respects, <laughs> especially in the weight of the of, of the concepts that we put forward to people. We're like you know we're very much a, a forward thinking band, and we want to deliver a message. I guess. And you kind of your album takes you almost into another dimension where you can hear clearly in a relaxed feeling. That's how you feel when you listen to it. Yeah. That's great. That's amazing. It's like it puts you into a frame of mind that sort of opens your mind up to the music more and the message. Yeah, I mean, we've been quite lucky in the way that we've structured this album in terms of the writing process in some ways because for the first time the band has worked together. In the past, it was very much Ackle who was the main guitarist. He was also the main songwriter. Um, Mm. He would write all the music and it would be down to the lyricists or me to kind of do my thing. Whereas this time around, it's been more inclusive. So, for example, James, the second guitarist, he wrote the main parts of King. Mm -hmm. Um, Amos wrote a lot of Juno, uh, who's the bassist. And Aiden, our front of house engineer and also our second producer, he contributed a whole lot towards the album. And he did something really interesting, which was reach out to our fan base people from all over the world and ask them to send in field recordings of interesting sounds and it's like it was completely open could be any sound as long as it was recorded with you know, a decent field recorder so that we could use it in a, in, a, in a sound context so he managed to collate all of these beautiful sounds from all over the world like there was one sound from someone that lived in a high story building in france that had a thunderstorm and he recorded the sound of the thunder echoing down an air conduit which sounded really alien and then there was a guy that was a chef and he recorded the sound of a knife cleaving through meat and hitting a wood chop board so all these like daily kind of sounds that people hear mm. or just kind of like don't don't pay attention to and we, and we incorporated all of those sounds into the album very subtly and in another respect that that was also making the fan base in, inclusive in the process and drawing everybody into it so yeah it's been a very exciting interesting way of writing one that I'd like to revisit for sure but I do in terms of the album as a whole I'm happy with it I wish I would have had more time than in the mix, if I'm honest. I'm not completely happy with the mix of it, but whoever is. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I think Test Shot still has a lot more to offer. I think the best is yet to come, but I think this will be a well-received album, for sure. Yeah, but I want to actually just step back a moment again and ask how you actually got into music. Did you come from a musical family? I actually don't. I grew up uh, in a small mining town in the middle of the East Midlands. Right. My hard-working family, no musicality really at all. Um, I grew up listening to varied music. Um, my mother was huge on reggae. My dad was huge on punk and, and hard rock. So I grew up listening to uh, the Sex Pistols and ACDC, things like that. And then, uh, look, the first record that I ever got addicted to as a child was Bad from Michael Jackson. Uh, and I'm sure that's the same with a lot of people. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that was the voice that kind of really made me want to sing, I guess. And you know, it, it never really lost me. I didn't study music. I actually got a standard education and went straight into employment in a number of different jobs. But got to a point when I started to kind of, you know, get into bands with other guys. I used to typically do play the guitar, tried to do both. That didn't work. So I had to give one up, decided to sing. Had a few nice comments from people saying, yeah, that suits you, you should do more of it. And had a taste for playing live gigs developed a few other bands and then it kind of just the fire grew from there really and um, I started to meet lots of people and travel to London and network and hone my craft and then one day I managed to get into um, a band that was signed to Zali that was signed to a Japanese record label the band was called Piano Mm -hmm. and that was my first real break if you like my first real experience of touring in a band (laughs) actually going to Japan and tour so I was throwing writing at the deep and that really set me off that gave me a real first to want to be a performer and uh, and travel. So I started to join other bands. Some of them didn't work. Um, some of them made me, you know, I didn't really find the right character. I didn't find myself as an artist. And then Test Rack came along and all of a sudden everything made sense. And then I obviously released the first album uh, with Test Rack. And that's at a point when I resigned from the career that I had at the time. Later on, I was a police officer. Uh-huh. did that for eight years. And then decided to resign and leave the stability of a secure career to become a lifer to metal. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
pitch was a real leap of faith, I'll be honest. It came with a lot of challenges, and one of those challenges was the financially. That was a big factor in me leaving the band at that particular point in time, having to find alternative ways to kind of exist. Uh, I then became a vocal coach, discovered that I could earn a living from teaching people, uh, studied vocal pedagogy or the vocal, vocal science, became a teacher. Um, developed a fan base in that respect and that gave me a platform to you know, be in a band again and try and make it happen um, because I now had a second income from music mm-hmm. so it all kind of tied together in the end and the, the planets realigned and Tesseract approached me again things didn't work out with Ash I was at a better moment in life and um, we haven't looked back since uh, we're very stable it's the first time we've actually released two consecutive albums with one singer even though I've sang on three albums because I left and came back again and uh, we feel very stable uh, we're, we're really happy. It's a great working relationship and we've got a long-term plan. So the future is very exciting for us at the minute. Yeah, definitely. And while you are spending a lot of time on the road touring all over the place the rest of the year, of course, to celebrate the release of Sonda, and you've just announced that you will be coming to Australia in September. Yeah, that is one of the parts of the job that we're really excited about. I mean, people say, how excited are you for the album to come out? To be honest, I'm more excited about being back on stage. That's where we feel we shine the most, I guess. Um, We have a really excellent live sound because our front of house engineer is incredible. It makes it sound pristine. We wouldn't sound the way we do live without him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're trying to improve that live sound all the time. And we're very proud of the fact that we replicate the record in a live scenario and people appreciate that. So, yeah, it's uh, it's, we're on the start of a new campaign. It's going to be a worldwide campaign. It's going to be hard work, don't get me wrong, but we're looking forward to coming to Australia for sure. And I was just saying to somebody else, someone asked me, what have I uh, what have I not done in Australia yet that I'd like to? And it's funny because every time we come, it's a flying visit. It's in and out, jump on a plane, do a gig and gone. Night in a hotel, then out. I really want to go to the beach. <laughs> spend some time. It never, it never seems to happen, so hopefully that might happen this time, luckily. Well, you're starting off in Perth on September the 11th and they've got warm weather and lots of beaches, so maybe you can do it then. No. Oh. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, and then, well, you've actually got the Wednesday off after your first Perth gig, so you might be able to get it in because you're going to Adelaide on Thursday the 13th of September. Then Friday the 14th you are here in Melbourne at 170 Russell and Saturday, September the 15th you're at the Metro in Sydney and Sunday the 16th you're finishing off at the Trifford in Brisbane who also have beautiful weather and lots of beaches. So you've got a chance at the start or the end. (laughs) Sounds amazing. Uh, At the the minute over here we're having what's being referred to as the beast from the east and Mm -hmm. we've had it twice already and we've got a third one which is a bigger wave of Scandinavian snow. (laughs) So we're covered at the minute and it's freezing so it's very miserable. Looking forward to some sunshine for sure. Yeah, well it'll be definitely warming up again in September September down here and yeah awesome. you've got circles who will be doing that tour with you of course but uh the album sonda is out on the 20th of april and if people go to tesseractband.co.uk they can pre-order the album and you are tesseract band on facebook and you've got your own facebook page daniel Tompkins vocalist so people should go and check you out. Is there something you want to say to your Australian fans to get them to grab hold of the album? Uh, you know, people are going to are gonna pick it up if they want to pick it up. I, I don't like to pressurise people. If they love the band, they're going to take a listen and they're going to buy the album supporters. You know, we're very lucky that we've got such an amazing fan base and it is worldwide. Mm. And without support of fans picking up an album, regardless of where you get it from, it's a misconception. People think that if you don't get an album from directly from the artist that, you know, they're not going to have a career. But actually, you pick the album up anywhere you can, it's going to help us. So, you know, we really appreciate that. And I have to say that when we do come to Australia, the fan base is incredible. Like, we sell out shows. Everyone is so friendly and has an amazing time. So I actually can't wait to be in that environment again with our Australian fans and have a great time. Yeah, well, I was going to say you've got a big fan base in Australia and I know they're very passionate. Like, I was really nervous about doing this interview because I know how passionate your fans are and I didn't want to screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. I'm sure I'm sure they'll they'll be gentle with you. Yeah. It has been great talking to you. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Enjoyed it. And I hope you have a, a great day. I guess it is over there. All right, you too. Take it easy. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye.